are the main movers and shakers when it comes to new construction in the Knoxville and East Tennessee area. In this video, we are going to talk about who those builders are, what they're building, and what their price points are. What can you expect on the buyer journey as you're purchasing a house with these builders? This is not a comprehensive list. These are the major building at scale builders. So what I call the big box builders in the Knoxville and East Tennessee area. Let's get going. All right, we're gonna go from least expensive to most expensive. Number one, least expensive, we're starting with DR Horton. DR Horton builds at mass in the area. We're talking Knoxville, West Knoxville, East Knoxville. We're talking Maryville. We're talking Talbot, Morristown, Jefferson City. They are Oak Ridge. They are pretty much all over the area. So here's the thing about DR Horton. DR Horton, there are no customizations at all whatsoever. What you see is what you get. What happens is you get your agent or you get yourself, if you're working with a buyer's agent, you get you or yourself on a list to receive updates for when they are releasing houses. So for example, right now they're building a neighborhood in the Maryville area right near Heritage High School. Okay, so if you wanted to be, if you wanted to build or purchase in that neighborhood, you're gonna get on that list. And then every Tuesday, your rep or your agent or both are going to say, hey, here's the houses for release this week. And what typically happens is, say that's on a Tuesday, sometimes Thursday, Tuesdays or Thursdays, they release a set of houses. And sometimes houses in the neighborhood you want to be in are not released that week. And other times maybe they release a Cali floor plan, but you want a Hayden floor plan. So essentially you have to watch for those releases. And once a property that you want is released, you put your name in the hat, for that you fill out a form and you submit it by sunday at midnight or it's usually like 11 59 on the following sunday you put your name in the hat you also have to have a pre-approval letter at the time of this video so this is april 2024 you have to have a pre-approval with a dhi lender so that is their lending partner you do get some incentive and those incentives change but essentially, even if you're not going to use DHI, you must have currently at the time of this video, a pre-approval from their preferred lender. Now, some people get really upset about that. The thing is that back in 21, 22, when things were so crazy, people were getting these very quick pre-approval letters from like online internet lenders that were somewhat bogus, okay? So then DHI and DR Horton, or DR Horton ended up getting screwed over because they were getting letters from people that were not legit. So anyways, that being said, it's not a trap. They aren't trying to screw you over, but that's the whole reasoning behind it. Do you have to use that lender? No. Does DR Horton and DHI try to make it so that it's advantageous for you to do so? Like sometimes they'll do a certain amount of closing costs, some sort of incentive for, for you to use that lender, okay? So that's DR Horton. What happens if you put your name in the hat and you don't get it? You try again the next time. And when I say like it's just a form, that you're like saying what lot you want, you're saying if you're pre-approved and all those things. So you fill out that piece of paper, you submit it by their deadline. And then usually they let you know the following Monday if you are in, if you're first in line for that property. Now, some DR Horton homes, depending on location, are going for over asking. So for example, there is a neighborhood called Towering Oaks in West Knoxville. Those houses are typically going for over whatever they're listed at or asking price because of location versus you're probably gonna be paying at ask in like a Talbot or Jefferson City or Morristown or even one of the South Knox neighborhoods. So anyways, that's DR Horton. They, all of these that we're gonna talk about today are a well-oiled machine. All of them do pay a buyer agent commission. So if you're working with a buyer's agent, DR Horton, at the time of this video, I know we've got some like crazy stuff going on with the NAR settlement that's not yet approved. Again, it's April, 2024 at the time I'm making this video. So currently at the time I'm making this video, if you're working with a buyer's agent, these builders are paying your buyer's agent's commission. And there are several reasons for that. I mean, essentially the good thing about working with an agent is, especially if you're out of town, they can kind of track progress for you. They can make videos for you. They can keep things going. Um, and also kind of be your point of contact. So anyways, that's just a side note about that. All right, number two, and kind of next, these are, the next two are kind of like neck and neck in terms of pricing. Smithville and Turner Homes. So Smithville is a huge building operation. They, to me, are the most well-oiled machine of all of these. And I think it's because they build at such volume. 
similar to what DR Horton does. The difference between Smithbilt and DR Horton is Smithbilt is, they don't have like the same kind of time frame where they release on a Tuesday, you put your name in the hat and you find out. With Smithbilt, the house is available, send a copy of your earnest money check, fill out your contract or fill out your offer and you hear back within 24 hours, typically, okay? Typically, keep that in mind. Now, if you get in early enough to a Smith Boat property that's been released, so they release these essentially and they'll list them on the MLS. If you get into that before they have made selections for the property, you get to make your own selections. I've had people buy Smith Boat where they didn't get to make any selections, and I've had people buy Smith Boat where they got to make all the selections. That's literally the difference between two weeks. So if you are thinking like, I want a Smith Boat home, but I want to make my own selections, it's best you know, to be working with a buyer's agent who can just be in constant contact with the listing agent for Smith Built to know like what kind of floor plan you want and one of those going to be releasing for availability. Also Smith Built, when you do your choices, essentially what happens is you get under contract on a house, they have a design center if you get in soon enough and you will go through and you'll choose pretty much all of your customizations, your paint colors, your flooring, what your front door looks like, the exterior, do you want stone or brick? Do you want well, all those things? Do you want a covered back deck? Everything. What kind of countertop do you want? What kind of counter do you want? Lighting, everything, all the things. Now, at that time, you leave a check with them for the difference of the amount. So say you do $60,000 in upgrades, you leave a check with them for $60,000 and if something goes if something goes bonkers and you're not closing, you're still in line for that difference of upgrade money. Now, you're not in line to purchase the house, you're gonna lose your non-refundable earnest money deposit, but like you're still gonna have to pay for those upgrades. So that's just something when it comes to Smith Belt, how it works. They are another where they're wanting a pre-approval from their preferred lender. Again, there are advantages just like with DR Horton. There are advantages and some sort of, usually they call it just, there's some sort of monthly special that you're gonna get depending on when you're getting under contract to work with their specific lender and get, but you're gonna have to have a pre-approval from that lender. So Smithville, depending on the type of house, you're looking about 300,000 to 500. Maybe if I, I had a client, I've had a client who they closed the Smith built in the 370s and then I've had another that's closed in the, in the 525 range. So, and another that's gonna be high fours, I believe. So anyways, they're kind of that, it depends on location, what house you're getting, obviously upgrades and all those things. All right, next up we have Turner Homes and Turner Homes to me price-wise are similar and Turner is a smaller operation, but is still, I put them in this category because they are developing subdivisions and neighborhoods, and they also do more townhomes than any of the rest of these. Yeah, I think Turner does more townhomes than anybody. Smithville does some. Smithville has a, a neighborhood called Belltown coming into the Carnes area, and that's gonna be all different types of housing, so there will be some townhomes in there, but Turner does townhomes, and they also do single family houses. Turner to me has the most custom feel of these DR Horton versus Smith Bolt versus Turner. So that's just my personal opinion and thoughts in dealing with Turner. I've had clients who they purchased a Turner home once it was fully built. I've had clients who purchased a Turner home when they could still make selections. Now some selections, so Smith Bolt has a much more robust version of selections than what Turner does. Turner, it's kind of like you're gonna choose your cabinet color, you're gonna choose your flooring, and maybe you add a refrigerator. Like it's not where a Smithville's like you're choosing the lighting, I mean everything. If I remember correctly, you on the when you go to Turner to customize, it's literally a one page sheet of things you can choose versus like when you do Smithville, you're going, it's a half a day, like 8 a.m. to noon or whatever, where you're making selections. So a little bit different when it comes to what's available, but Turner, you can make selections. And again, that's if you get in, in soon enough, if you get in kind of at the ground level at the very beginning, then you're able to make selections. And if you purchase something already listed, most likely with Turner, you are going to, or something that's been listed for a while, you're not gonna be able to make those selections. The other thing about Turner in terms of their process, if there's a sp specific community that you're wanting to be in, it's best to have your agent 
get in contact with the rep for Turner and say, hey, my person is interested in a townhome in this neighborhood or in a house in this neighborhood. They want a corner lot or they want to, you know, when it comes to a townhome, you know, do you want a corner lot? Do you want to be on the end? Really is kind of your main choices. But, or do you want a two story or do you want a one story? Because they do both of those. They have a combination in some of their neighborhoods. So Turner, really same situation with the others. You're putting down earnest money. If you make upgrades in Turner, you write the check that day for those things. And similar to Smithfield. Turner as well, again, as with the others, has a preferred lender, similar story. All right, next up we've got Ball Homes. Now Ball Homes is most, most times when you see Ball Homes, you're gonna see West Knoxville and Hardin Valley. They are also building what's called a trend collection in Maribel, and that's a little bit of a cheaper, not cheaper, it's a more value product it's not as high priced. So for example, Ball Homes is currently building a neighborhood in Maryville. Those are mid threes and up. Something you're gonna see in Hardin Valley could be as high as 600 or more. Same thing in West Knoxville. Uh, Ball Homes out of all of these, in my opinion, has the best proportions. When you go to a Ball Home, you're like, wow, there's a lot of area in here. It just feels big in a Ball Home, in my opinion. That's my opinion. Ball Homes is one where you're not making any changes. They're not doing any build to suit at this time. Again, it's April, 2024. And that's as of my latest understanding of what's going on with Ball Homes, but that could change. So definitely make sure to check in with your agent, whoever you're working with at the time, because also Ball Homes, they can kind of tell you what's coming available in the next seven months. Um, where, what, how, is there going to be anything with a three car garage? Is there going to be anything with, you know, a basement? So all of those things, the reps for ball homes are awesome, super helpful. I mean, everybody, everybody on these that I've worked with has been amazing. So just make sure, ask questions. You just remember if you're wanting something like a three car garage or something like that, that's only going to fit a very specific lot. So you're gonna want your agent to get your name in the hat, to reach out to that rep and say, hey, I were looking for a lot that could accommodate a three car garage. What do you have coming down the line? Recently, this was a question I asked and she's like, we've got two floor plans and none of those are gonna work. N nothing we have coming down the line. None of the lots that we have are gonna really work for that. So definitely if you require something like that, you wanna have your agent work with their rep to make sure that these are your options when do we need to pull the trigger? When is this gonna be released? That kind of thing. All right, next up is Goodall Homes. So Goodall currently at the time of this video is building in Lenore City and in Farragut Ivy Farms. This is another example where custom customization is not a thing. If you go to Good, Goodall Homes, if you go to their model homes at Ivy Farms as an example, the one currently, they're about to open a new one at the make of this video because they've got some selections no longer available that are in their current model home. But they are 59850, I believe. These are certain lots, certain houses go on certain lots, no changes at all whatsoever. They will say that they've already upgraded as much as they can in a home. So for example, if a house could have a full bath instead of a half, they're gonna do a full bath. So they kind of already make those updates. There's no selections that can be made period, point blank. Uh, so essentially, when it comes to what you're picking is you're picking a floor plan and then you're seeing what lots are available with that floor plan. Now, right now, if you were to go, I think they, like they release in sections and parcels of the neighborhood, right? So if you go to Ivy Farms right now, you're gonna see that the road is there, but there's only four or five houses, maybe six, that are currently available in the neighborhood. So they release them like a portion at a time. Some of them back up to a common space. Some of them back up to other houses. Some of them have the, there's like a walkway in Ivy Farms right next to it. So some of them have access to that. So really when you're looking at Ivy Farms, if you're just wanting to get a house with a certain floor plan, that's one thing. Now here's the other thing. They have like a traditional, and I think they call it a colonial, and I think they have a craftsman. So they've got different styles. So when you say, when you go to Goodall Homes, they'll be like, well, this is your traditional. And so that tells you certain things about the exterior, about the paint colors being used, et cetera. Sometimes that means it's gonna be all brick. So they, because you're not making customizations, that doesn't mean that all the houses look the same, but it is saying like, there's this floor plan that has three different types of overall outcome. So what you're doing is saying, okay, well, I like this 
plot. I like this plan. What floor plan is going on this plot? Because for me, like I would choose the parcel first and then if the floor plan works for the parcel, I'm happy. But maybe you care more that the house is white, hardy versus a brown brick, right? So if you're wanting a white hardy board house, then in a certain floor plan, but you don't care so much about what the lot is, it's kind of this or that. It really just depends on your preference. But again, good all homes, you're not making any customizations. That is several months build out time, you know, similar process when it comes to how the others go. You essentially choose your parcel, choose, well, you choose your house based on, like I said, either the lot you're choosing for lot or you're choosing for house style. Now, if those align and your house style happens to be on a parcel that you love, that's great. Or if the parcel has your ideal home, that's great, but you may be making some compromises one or the other. All right, lastly, in this big box builder category is Saddlebrook. Saddlebrook, is, to me, is the most high level. Certainly from a price perspective, you're thinking mid 700s and up. They have done some that are just, there was a, there's a small neighborhood off Westland. Those were in the 600s this time last year. Right now, if you were to go to Meadows on McPhee, you could probably get a low sevens where, and then also right now, if you go to Grove at Boyd Station, you can get a townhouse in the high sixes. So that's a three, two, um, 2000 square foot townhouse. Um, with Saddlebrook, interesting. They have what you call a traditional floor plan. So that would be what I would say, what I would equate to as like a base model. Like with a Honda, you can get the Honda LX. You can get the Honda EX, you can get the Honda EX whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like you can get the base model or you got the roll up windows and there's no leather and there's no special buttons. Or you can get the one that has like the full roof sunroof. You know what I'm saying? So there's different there's different models. So when I say traditional, if you go to right now, if you go to Saddlebrook and you click on any floor plan, at the top of that, it's gonna say, at the top it'll say traditional. Well, that's the base model. So for example, right now I have a client, we're listing their property, it's an Admiral floor plan, Saddlebrook. That floor plan is shown as a two-story, two-car garage, three-bed, two-bath with a bonus. What my clients are selling is an Admiral floor plan, but it's a three-car garage, it's a two-story plus an unfinished basement, it's a four-bed, four and a half bath with bonus and a covered deck. All of that stuff I just said was additional. Now, here's how this works. You've got your traditional plan and that's gonna be your most basic, okay? Now, you can purchase like a spec home that's already, all the selections are made. That's what, if you were to look right now, if you go to type in Meadows on McPhee or just another example, the Grove at Boyd Station, you're gonna see houses that are listed for sale. Those are built, those selections are already done you're done. You're also going to have the opportunity to find a, a plot, a piece of property. That piece of property can fit specific homes. So for example, this is the Meadows on McPhee plot map. And this is as of March 3rd. So I'm making this in April. So this is not the most up-to-date, but I just want to give you an example. So red dots are what's sold. Now these where you see like, oh, something's here. That is a house built on speculation. That it's there's no changes nothing's happening now say you're like oh I like lot 15 which just happens to be that one then you will talk with the rep for her name's Robin at the time I'm making this video and she's literally amazing shout out to Robin she is but basically you say okay well what houses can you fit here well you can probably see that like you cannot put a three-car garage on this property it's too small so she can say, okay, well, here's places where you can put a three-car garage. Here's places where you could have a basement, those plots. Then you say, okay, well, which floor plans do you like? I think it's easier to go from plot to floor plan rather than floor plan to plot, but that's just me personally because I care more about the property, like how it's gonna sit than necessarily the house itself. Like I can adjust to floor plan if I really like the lot, but some people really want the floor plan and the lot is secondary. So. Anyways, that being said, essentially what you, you've got several options. One is to get something already built where you're making no choices. One is to essentially start from scratch where you take their traditional floor plan and you make it however you want. So Saddlebrook to me is the most similar to what we would say is a custom built, 
even though it's not really custom, but essentially what you would do is pick your floor plan, pick your plot where you want that house. Once you're under contract, you do earnest money. You also have a down payment and that is held. And then you meet with their design. You go to their design center, you pick out everything, seven and a half ish months process depending. So Saddlebrook to me is the most uh, customizable, but also that's the one you're gonna pay the most for because right now, if you go to Grove at Boyd Station, you're looking at 900s and up for a Grove at Boyd Station house. And those might be a little bit smaller. You're looking at the 700s and up essentially. So those are your, that's your kind of quick and dirty, the big box builders. I don't know if that's the correct term. That's what I refer to them as. They're, they're the big builders, currently big people that are developing neighborhoods in the Knoxville and East Tennessee area. All of them are excellent. Typically, what I mean, essentially what's great about going this route is they are a well-oiled machine. So if you're thinking, I want, maybe I wanna do custom, or maybe I don't know what I wanna do, like what's gonna be the most or least headache is going to be going with a builder like this who has their well-oiled machine. So there are, yes, there are smaller, more one-off builders currently building all over Hardin Valley, Carnes area, but I picked and I picked these because these are going to be the ones that you're going that are going to be the most readily available when it comes to new construction like over time. So, anyways, let me know your thoughts and questions. But all of these with new construction, any new construction whether or not it's a big box builder all the way down to just a single just one single build, you you do get a 1-year home warranty. And then different builders also offer different things like for different systems, maybe an extended warranty on things or whatever, but all of them are required by the state of Tennessee to have a one year builder warranty. The other thing is if you're within Knox County, all new construction is required to build with a radon stack, not a radon mitigation system, but with a radon stack within the home so that if radon is a problem, you already kind of have the plumbing um, to put in a radon mitigation system. Again, all of these do provide your buyer agent commission. All right, I think that is everything for Knoxville East Tennessee big box builders that are currently developing neighborhoods at a high level, at volume, at scale in the Knoxville East Tennessee area. Again, I want to reiterate to you that this is not a comprehensive list. This is my list of the major builders to look out for, to go check out if you're curious about new construction homes. And because these are building at such scale, these are probably gonna be your most economical at every price point, right? So whether you're in the 300s with a DR Horton, or you're looking at a million dollar property with a Saddlebrook, anywhere in between, these are, because they're building at such scale, they're gonna be your most economical at that price point. So if you've got questions, if you want to go check out a neighborhood, if you want more information about what's being released in these specific communities by specific builders, as always, as always give me a call, give me a text, Call or text is the best way to reach out to me. Uh, leave me a voicemail, send me a text message. I would love to help you. All right, well, that is all. I'll see you next time.